switch it up with Sienna's Spotlight, where I chat with creative, fun, and talented people in and around pop culture. And today, I have a very special guest. I'm honored to welcome career consultant and acting coach for young performers and my acting coach, Denise Simon. I'm especially excited because I get to talk with her about not only her background as an acting coach, but as an actress, teacher, director, casting director, and talent manager. She managed such clients as Scarlett Johansson, Mira Servino, and Lacey Chabert. Denise has been teaching young actors for over 30 years. She also works with high school students on their college auditions. And she's the author of Parenting in the Spotlight, How to Raise a Child Star Without Screwing Them Up, which is available on Amazon. And she's the host of Parenting in the Spotlight podcast on Spotify, Apple, and Google. And now, without further ado, here's my interview with Denise Simon. I've been studying acting with you for over four years, and you've helped coach me through some of the most challenging scenes and also given me a safe space in acting class to grow with other kids from all different paths. I'm excited to now learn more about your path and journey from actor to manager to teacher and coach and author and podcast host. So what was it that first interested you in acting? Well, um, first, before I answer that, I just want to tell you that I'm honored <laughs> to be interviewed by you, Sienna. When I first met you, you were just a young girl, and now you're turning into this beautiful yeah, tween young teen. So um, I, you know, I'm a big fan of yours and I admire what you're doing. So I just, I need to say that. And now I will go ahead and answer the question. Uh, um, what led me to this path? So I, like you, was a child uh, with a dream and I started acting uh, probably around the same age you did. Um, and, um, you know, my parents, saw that I was interested in this and they they tried to help me. So any opportunity that I had to act, I did. Mostly it was, you know, community theater. I had a guitar at a young age and I wrote songs and sang and I knew that art was my um my form of communication that I I I needed to to have some sort of art form in my life, whether it be singing, music, acting. I wasn't a very good dancer. So I pursued it because I loved it. And I, I pursued it for a long time. I studied in college, I, I graduated college, I acted professionally for a while. And then I sort of changed course when I became a little bit older and I realized as much as I loved it, I wasn't able to make a living. Mm -hmm. And I was interested in actually um, being able to support myself and not just, you know, living hand to mouth as a waitress. And I wanted something a little bit more stable and secure. And that's what led me to the other side of the business. I always have worked with children though. So even to support myself as uh, a starving artist, I would teach classes to kids. And I worked at lots of uh, camps and I worked at sleepaway camps, theater camps. And that's when I realized I really loved the directing and the teaching and the coaching. And it was there that I was actually discovered by a theatrical manager who saw my work with children and asked if I would become a manager in her company. And I said, you know, my career's acting career is not really going anywhere. Let me give it a shot. And I think that's when it all began for me. Did you know this person well? I didn't. So she was a mom of um, two girls that went to the camp. It was Stage Door Manor, which is a very uh, renowned theater sleepaway camp. And, yeah. And a lot of the clients that they represented went there. And um, so I didn't know her. I connected with her uh, on a very, um, we just clicked. And I thought, you know, let, let me give it a shot. And I, honestly, within the first week I worked there, I knew that this was my calling. I never looked back. I gave up acting. Um, she uh, and I had a wonderfully, wonderful relationship. We still do. Uh, she's like a mother to me. And um, we worked together for 10 years and she let me grow my department there and discover lots of, uh, you know, amazing talent uh, and some household names. And um, yeah, the rest was kind of history. It, it really gave me my start into the other end of the industry. And, and I learned so much in those wow. um, And you studied acting in college and then after college um, with the Burt Reynolds Institute of Theater Training. 
Um, did you have a path you wanted to take as performer at that time? Yeah, so, you know, after we graduated college, a lot of kids went on and got their masters um, in acting or filmmaking or directing. And some of us, some people just went right to New York or LA and started working. Um, I had an opportunity to become an apprentice at, with Burt Reynolds at his theater. And during that year was all about a year of training and learning. And I was able to get my actor's equity card and come to New York with my union card. And so there were a lot of great perks about it, but I think um, the, the biggest, um, uh, lesson or, or the, the greatest thing I learned there was working with amazing actors, some of the, the best actors ever, actors who you probably don't know. I mean, you know a lot because I've seen a lot of the people you've interviewed, but actors like Charles Durning and Ned Beatty. And if you look them up and Google them, you'll see the big movies they were in, Tootsie, Streamers. And, um, and we learn just by watching them. Martin Sheen. I mean, I, I would just be backstage as as a dresser or you know a stagehand, and just I got to watch these amazing performers on stage. And so, I probably learned more about acting by watching them than anything else. And and we had our own classes. Burt Reynolds was our teacher. Charles Nelson Riley, the great Charles Nelson Riley, who you probably also don't know. Uh, was an amazing human uh, and teacher and mentor. And so I, I learned, I grew, and then a year later was able to move to New York with all that I'd learned, the connections I'd made, and my union card. That's cool. And um, what was the most memorable production or experience you had as an actor? Oh, gosh. Well, I have to say probably during that year, um, we did our own shows. So we were able to under, we were understudied the celebrities, which is sort of funny because I was young. I was maybe 19 or 20. No, no, I had to have been older, uh, 21, tw 21, 22. And I, I, do you know who Kirstie Alley is? No, I don't think so. Yeah, so she was a super big star. She was on Cheers. And I got to, it was Kirstie's first show ever with uh, Parker Stevenson. They were dating, actually, they were married at the time, I think, dating or married. And they did a play together. And I think it was Kirstie's first play. I was her understudy. Oh, wow. Never got to go on. But um, so I think that wasn't a show that I actually did. But um, of the shows that I did, we did our own apprentice production, student productions of um, I was a musical, uh, an, a singer, and so I did a lot of musicals too. And I love Stephen Sondheim. So perhaps Company might have been one of my favorites that I did. Uh, I did a production of, of Candide and Twelfth Night in College that are very near and dear to me. I did a wonderful little one act called This Property is Condemned by Tennessee Williams, which was uh, also an amazing role. It's a good role actually for you. Um, maybe that's a scene we could work on sometime. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Gosh, I, I can't say I have one. I, maybe I don't know if I've had one memorable one. Oh, yes, perhaps um, uh, I ought to be in pictures. Neil Simon's I ought to be in pictures that I was uh, able to do at Summerstock and also Butterflies Are Free. I loved comedy. And um, those might have been two of my uh, uh, favorite shows. And then of the dramas, it might have been Picnic, which is yeah. one of my favorites. And I, I got to direct a lot of those shows, too. Yeah, I, I actually... I mean, there may have been one that you mentioned that I've actually heard of, so I have to check those out. <laughs> you probably don't know a lot of them, but they're classics. Yeah. Um, and did do you have a coach that inspired you? Oh, I do, I do, I do. So, so Burt Reynolds and Charles Nelson Riley were my mentors that year. Um, but after that, when I moved to New York, my teacher and inspiration was the great Wynne Handman who sadly just passed away during COVID at the age of 98. Um. And he was still teaching. And he changed my life. And he taught me how to teach, really. So my directing, my teachings are very much reflective of, of who this man was. And he was, he was tough. And you know, I'm, I can be tough too, a little bit, right, as a teacher. And I, it's that tough love because t 
to sugarcoat it. I didn't learn anything, but he kind of scared me a little bit, you know, but he was also my biggest fan. So, um, yeah, he was probably, he was, he was the greatest teacher. Yeah. It seemed like he was. Yeah. They just made a movie about his, well, they made a movie about his life. One of his students made a movie about his life, which was really fabulous. And then they just had a big memorial for him, which I couldn't go to, but, um, he touched, he changed so many lives. He's worked with so many amazing, great actors. He actually had worked with Burt Reynolds. That's, that's how I knew of him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And um, why did you make the transition into management? Well, it was an accident. It wasn't any, I didn't even know what a manager was. Oh, wow. I had no idea. I knew what an agent was. I didn't know what a manager did. It wasn't like I grew up thinking I want to be a manager. I wanted to be an actor. That was all I could see. But when my acting career really wasn't feeding my soul anymore or my pocketbook, I thought, I don't know, I'll kind of just do anything that looks interesting. Someone's going to give me a paycheck to work with kids. I like that, you know? And so I fell into it. I fell into it. I learned on the job and I loved every second of it. I was good at it and it empowered me. And um, yeah, it was something I fell into. And you manage actors such as Scarlett Johansson and Lacey Chabrit um, when they were kids. At what point in their careers did you start working with them? So um, it's actually Lacey Chabert. And I don't know if you know Lacey either. She was in Mean Girls. I I know I was looking, I didn't like recognize the, well, I recognized the name, but like didn't at the same time. I remember when I was like, I think she, my mom was like, I think she's in Mean Girls. I was like, oh yeah, this does sound familiar. But I know. Joe Hanson, of course, everybody knows Scarlett, but also Lacey was in a show called Party of Five when she was young, and it's a show maybe your mom watched, but um, you might you might like some of the episodes. I mean, the series if you watch it. But um, so well, I managed Scarlett and Lacey, so I was managing before I was coaching. Actually, that's not true. I was teaching, then I became a manager. But when I managed my clients, I also was able to coach them on the side. So I was managing them, but when they were up for something, because I had a teaching background, I was also able to teach and coach them. So that was really nice. But no, I managed their career um, from a very young age. I mean, Lacey was very young, maybe seven. Scarlett was eight. And that's when I first started representing those those girls, uh, along with um, Mira Sorvino, who was 15 at the time. She won an Academy Award for uh, Woody Allen's Mighty Aphrodite. And then our clientele in general that um, some other people in the office uh, handled and I got to play a part in it um, was also a really illustrious um, group of actors. Josh Charles from The Good Wife, Zach Braff. Um, from Scrubs, Judy Reyes from Scrubs, Josh Hamilton, who's been on Broadway. Um, So many, so many young actors. One of our clients was Jen Rudin. Jen's a casting director. Now she's an agent in ICM. So we had an amazing roster. Yeah. And um, at what and at what point did you become an acting instructor instructor and coach and why? So um, Great question. So I I managed for 10 years and around the end of the 10 years, I um, had my first child. And Mm -hmm. when he was born, I was very busy at managing because my clients had gotten very successful. And so as a manager, especially representing somebody really successful, it's a 24 seven job. Like I had no other time. And I had this infant and I, Lacey was on party of five at the time. And I was traveling back to LA with my little baby in tow because I couldn't leave him. I didn't want to leave him. And I'd realized I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I didn't know how to be a mom to a newborn and still keep up with the hours. And then I had my second child. And then I, at that time I, I, I realized I, 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 I think I'm going to give up management and, um, and be a mom, but but coach because I could make and teach because I could make my own hours. So I started my own business at the time. Uh, and instead of starting my own business managing, because that was too time consuming for me, I started my own business teaching and coaching so that I could make my own hours. So I was able to be a, a mom and work part time until my kids got older. And then I was able to go full time into the coaching, uh, teaching, consulting business. Why do you think studying acting is valuable? 
if you want to be an actor, you must train. I mean, I, I know that good actors make acting look easy. So a lot of people think that looks fun. That looks easy. I'll be an actor. I have a good look, but you can't just be an actor without studying and training. You know that it's hard work and there's a skill involved and it doesn't just, you know, you take a course and it's over. It's, um, it's years of training and it's always training and it's growing and learning about yourself. And um, so it's crucial actually. Are there certain traits or talents you think are key to succeeding as a child actor? Um, sure. I think number one, that you have to want it really badly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have to, you have to have the dream. You have to, because there's a lot of sacrifices and it is a lot of hard work. And so you have to want it and you have to want it for the right reasons. You can't want it for, for money and fame. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you got to want it because you love embodying a character. You love being on stage. You love making movies. You love um, the whole process. And, mm -hmm. and maybe there's nothing else you can see yourself doing. Um, yeah. You know, you like putting yourself in the shoes of others. Um, so, I think you, it's just innate. It's something within you that, um, so you have the, the desire, the, the passion, uh, you have the work ethic. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it takes a lot of work because, you know, you're a kid and you're doing all your school commitments and your social life and other things you like to do. And then you've got to leave a lot of time for training and rehearsing and auditioning. And so I think, you know, you're someone who has to have a, a strong work ethic and um, maybe even like to multitask and be pretty organized because, you know, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I agree, especially doing it myself too. Yeah, and I think you have to have a supportive family. You know, I think you have to have um, the parents that understand that they may have to schlep and drive you to a lot of places and um, you know, help you at night with lines. And, and I, I can't say it's that different than maybe pursuing a sport or um, maybe an instrument on a, a competitive level, you know, where it takes a lot of practice and time, you know. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, and I interviewed a lot of actors for my web series, and so many of them have an, other jobs and hobbies. For example, Amina Kaplan um, from The Office, she was on, um, is also a musician and a choreographer. And Margot Hall from the movie Soul is also a director, um, playwright, and runs the Lorraine Hansberry Theater. Um, and how important do you think it is for an actor to develop other talents? Sienna, that is such a great question. And it, it came up the other day, actually, one of my colleagues is a manager and she signed one of my students and she had said to the dad, I think it's so important that your child do other things other than acting. And he didn't really understand what she meant. And he asked me if I could explain that. He asked me if I agreed with that. And I said, of course, I agree with that. Because it's what makes somebody so well-rounded and human and interesting and bring other things to the table. So in order to be a good actor, right, you've got to maybe know about the world or have some empathy or um, have other interests and hobbies that, that you can bring to your acting. So yeah. to be well-rounded and versatile is great, but also to do other things because this business is so volatile and you know you don't know if you're ever really going to work and if you do you may never work again or you may not work for a while so you have to do other things that fill you up and empower you and make you happy yeah and adding to that too um when i've had auditions self-tapes before a lot of a lot of times they ask um like for uh, hobbies you do and other things that you like to do and it's not like enough usually just to say acting because they know that you like to act if you're doing the self-tape or the audition they want to know like other like fun like different things that um you do that maybe someone else wouldn't do or things that ever like a lot of people do they just want to know more about what else you're interested in? Well, first of all, they can learn a lot about you. 
yes. um, by what else you do. And you know this, when you've had to do a personality slate, you know, before an audition, other than in addition to your name and age, they want to know a little bit about you. And that's so they can really get to see who you are and what makes you tick. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, so yeah, I think um, it's about being human, right? Being a really interesting human being that, that has something to offer the arts community. Yeah, definitely. Um, and how do you think the pandemic has changed the industry for the better or has it made it more challenging? Good, I think it's done both. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely more challenging in so many ways, right? Everything's been more challenging in that we're, we can't be in person uh, as much. I mean, we're starting to, right? Um, but not as much as we used to. And acting is such a hands-on, you know, energetic thing where, you know, you want to just be with people and get close to them and, and connect with them in the room. And, and, and not being able to do that has been very challenging. And we had to really resort to how can I be effective and, and, and teach effectively in a Zoom room, not being in a room with somebody. And we've had to learn how to do that. And and, and it can be done and it can be done successfully. Movies and TV shows have, are fully cast now, just being online, never having seen someone in person. Yeah. Because in, in, in the medium of film, it's all about what you look like on camera. So it can be done. Um, it's challenging also because I work with kids and kids need socialization and they miss their friends and their peers. And we have fun in acting class and, and you grow and connect and forge friendships. Can that be done online? Sure, it's not the same. But the, the flip side of that is that my students have become amazing at self-taping. Yeah. They, they have a great setup now. They, they can do it on, you know, on a dime. And they've gotten really good at it because um, they've had to. And the beauty now of being able to self-tape for most auditions is that you can tape and retape until you get it right, till you're happy with it. Um, and you don't have to commute in. It's not as much time and you know money. Uh, so a, a lot of people actually prefer doing it this way. I, look, I think the general consensus is people do still wish yeah, that it could all be back the way it was, but you know, it has forever changed who we are for the good and the bad, right? Yeah, and I think I think you've said to me before, like I think maybe when it first COVID first started, um, pandemic first started, but you said that because it's easier for a lot of the casting directors and stuff to do stuff online now and do auditions online, that it's going to be like for the audition part for a while, but then like callbacks and stuff will be in person and of course shooting whatever it is if you book it will be in person but I will say I remember us talking about that and I will say that of the casting directors you know that I that I speak with regularly um, a lot of them will will always keep the first round of auditions uh as self-tapes they really yeah. won't go back into the room for that first go around anymore because, yeah number one they can see so many more people yeah. so you know and that so that's a good thing for actors all around the country. Yeah. Like you don't have to live in a big city anymore to be up for a project. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, you as an actor have so much more competition now. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you, I know you now, you came out a couple of years ago with a book, which I, I'm pretty sure. I actually have a copy if you would like me to grab it. <laughs> On right here. Oh, great. Um, which, if you are a parent watching this and you have a, ch a child or children that wants to be an actor, I definitely recommend this book because I read it, my mom read it, and it has a lot of helpful tips in it. So, definitely. Um, but, anyways, you also just recently came out with a podcast called Parenting in the Spotlight with guests from agents to casting directors and more. Uh, can you talk a little bit about it? Sure. Um, the book um, was ha, has been very successful for many for many reasons. Uh, you know, obviously there's there's sort of no guide on how to do this, how to navigate the, the tricky waters of getting your child into show business, um, and so the book is very much a how to, but it's also um, a why. There's a psychology behind it. If parents are 
um, nervous or afraid of exposing their child to the industry because they, they think it's going to be a negative or they don't know any much about it. Um, I believe there are many more positives than negatives in, and you can speak to this as well, I'm sure, uh, all of these life lessons that you learn by pursuing um, a professional business. Or, or pursuing an art, you know, just learning how to be collaborative and discipline and uh, not being afraid to speak in public and gaining confidence, learning how to deal with rejection at an early age, transferable life skills. And so the book is very important and, and dear to me. And so uh, people don't, re some people don't even read anymore. We we're so, fa you know, we live in such a busy world, we're in the car, we're running here and podcasting is like a thing. It's just what people do. They put the headphones on and listen. And I thought, well, that's just the next thing I need to do. So let me just take the book and, and let's talk, let's have conversations. Yeah. Uh, you know, similar to what you and I are doing right now. I know that we're, um, you know, visually we're visual as well as audio, but a podcast you know, is it's easy for people to listen to, and um, we're able to cover a lot of ground. I just finished the first season, where I, I have a lot of uh, information that I give on my own, but I also interview some guests. And I'm just about uh, over the summer, I'll start to work on season two, where I'll be bringing in many more guests and some former uh, child actors who uh, some have stayed in the business and some who have, have left the business. So it's, it's just evolving. Um, I've just began a few months ago, and I'm really enjoying it. That's great. That's great to hear. And um, before um, we wrap it up, I have two more questions. Um, so one is, if you were an acting coach, what, what would you be? If you were an acting coach, if you weren't a manager, if you weren't an actor, was there any, any other like um, job that was, wasn't in the industry that you would do? The million dollar question. I am someone who wants to do a million things before I leave this planet. <laughs> so, and, um, and it's, I've been thinking ab about that a lot now. I'm not sure I have it in me to go back to school and learn a trade, but I think um, going back, if I, if I wasn't this, I might've been an obstetrician. I might've delivered babies. Oh. Um, I, I love young people. I love children, teens. I, I'm a kid at heart. And so working with kids keeps me really youthful. Um, you know, I, I might have been a singer songwriter had I really pursued that yeah. more. I had tried to pursue that, but it wasn't easy. But again, I'm going to keep coming up with things that are in the arts, but completely not in the arts. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I would have delivered babies. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and my last question, which is actually a few questions, and I've done this with a few of my guests before, and it's this rapid, uh, rapid fire. And basically, um, it's a bunch of questions. Um, well, not a bunch, I'd say, of it, like five. And you have to say either like you know, a lot of guests do this in like a few minutes because it's hard to think something on the spot. But I'll ask you a few random questions and then whatever comes to your mind first or if you have to think about it for a second, you'll say the answer. OK, OK, here you go. So the first Broadway show that comes to mind. A chorus line. OK, most memorable vacation. Barcelona? Favorite animation movie? Toy Stories, one, two, three. Uh, favorite restaurant in New York City? That's changed over the years. At the time, it was Nobu, Sushi by Gary. Okay. Um, you give advice to so many young actors. What advice would you give to your 12-year-old self? Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> That's a great answer. Um, thank you. I just want, before we close, um, I want to thank you for being a teacher um, and a guide, even during the pandemic when everything shut down. You continue to find ways to help me and your students connect and work through the challenges. I am grateful that I'm still learning from you and can't wait to see where it leads. You brought tears to my eyes, Sienna. You are an inspiration to other young people. Thank you. You are doing, you know, you're following your heart and you're a, a smart, creative young lady. 
And um, I love what you're doing. Thank you for asking me. Thank you for being in my life. I love that we have this relationship. And if I were your age, like you might be one of my besties. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. It was great talking to you. And I learned more about you, even though I've known you for four years. Just to <laughs> <laughs> oh well i'll see you in class yes i will thank you thank you bye 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 thank you denise for sharing your inspiration and background and for being an inspiration to me and to everyone out there be sure to check out denise's classes and her book and podcast parenting in the spotlight both are amazing and are such great sources of information well, that's it for today. See you next time on Search It Up with Sienna Spotlight.